I'm back! Wow, um, a lot of huge political stories have taken place over the last few weeks. Um, I'm pretty surprised. I actually thought that things would have been, you know, calm over Christmas and New Year. Brexit done, Julian Assange extradition blocks, and a third national lockdown. And just a week ago, Capitol Hill riots from Trump supporters. That's what we'll be getting into today. Um, so this is a huge story, quite shocking really. Many people have said that fascism is on its way to the US. I have said, no, it's already here. Uh, so unless you've been living under a rock, here's what happened. After attending a pro-Trump rally, thousands of his supporters marched down Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol, and many stormed the building in an effort to disrupt the electoral college vote count by a joint session of Congress and prevent the formalisation of President-elect Joe Biden's election victory. Breaching police parameters, riots then occupied, vandalised and looted parts of the building for several hours. The assault led to the evacuation and lockdown of the capital, as well as five deaths. Call to action by Trump, his supporters gathered in Washington DC on January the 5th and 6th in support of his false claim that the 2020 election had been stolen from him, and to uh, excuse me, and to uh, demand that Vice President Mike Pence and Congress reject Biden's victory. At a Save America rally on the Ellipse on January the 6th, Trump, Donald Trump Jr. and Giuliani, and several members of the Congress incited a crowd of Trump supporters. Trump told them to fight like hell, to take back our country, encouraging them, sorry, excuse me, encouraging them to march over to the Capitol. So just take a look at these clips from the Trump rally first. We will never give up, we will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. Our country has had enough. We will not take it anymore. And that's what this is all about. And to use a favorite term that all of you people really came up with, we will stop the steal. Donald Trump is to blame for this. For months he's been stating that the election was rigged, uh, has been firing up his supporters, using inflammatory language right up to the riots. This isn't a small number, not a fringe group of Trumpers, but typically the amount of people who turn up to all of his rallies, a huge number. The footage is shocking. To make things worse, these people came armed. According to Wikipedia again, Two improvised explosive devices believed to have been planted before the riots were found within a few blocks of the capital. A device suspected to be a pipe bomb was discovered next to a building containing Republican National Committee offices at around 12.45 p.m. About half an hour later, another suspected pipe bomb was found under a bush at the Democratic National Committee headquarters. The device was of a similar design, about one foot in length, with end caps and wiring apparently attached to a timer and containing an unknown powder and some metal. The devices were, of course, safely detonated by, uh, by bomb squads, excuse me. Um, police later said they were hazardous and ha uh, could have caused great harm. The FBI distributed a photo of the person who they believe planted the devices and issued a warrant of up to $50,000 for information. Uh, a vehicle containing a semi-automatic rifle and a cooler full of 11 Molotov cocktails was also found nearby. The driver was subsequently arrested. He also had three handguns in his possession at the time of his arrest. Here's the thing. Why wasn't there a sufficient amount of police to control the disorder? If this was a Black Lives Matter march, you think a few officers that were there would be taking selfies with the protesters. Now, I'm not saying all of them did. 
as one officer was unfortunately among um, the deaths that occurred that day. I can assure you that there would have been triple the amount of officers and a hell of a lot more violence against BLM protesters. Now, of course, with any new political story, there are always going to be really shitty takes. Ian Austin wrote an article in The Sun, a rag of paper, should I say. The headline reads, could Congress attack happen in Britain? It could with our lefty mob. First quote is from the article, but spare me the sickening hypocrisy of Jeremy Corbyn supporting hard left here in Britain. Thankfully, we've been spared violence on that scale. The deaths it caused and the evasion of Parliament. But they and Trump are two sides of the same coin. Extremists who bully and intimidate their opponents. He goes on to say, the good sense of the British people kept Corbyn out of power. But look at the way the hard left set up momentum to strengthen their grip on the Labour Party. Look how the mob on social media target anyone who dares to challenge them. Would a hard left government not have changed the rules to stay in power? Would the hardline Stalinists they work with had accept an election defeat? Unfortunately, there's more bad takes. What is the difference between Trump using conspiracy theories to claim the election was stolen and the hard left betrayal myth that claim that excuse me that claims Corbyn almost won in 2017 but was cheated out of a victory by sabotage by moderate MPs and Labour staff? What is the difference between Donald Trump not accepting a democratic election? And the left claiming there was internal sabotage within Labour HQ to try and lose 2017 election. Well, aside from the fact that it was pretty obvious, senior Labour figures constantly going on TV, undermining the leadership. You yourself, who literally told people to vote for Boris Johnson instead of Jeremy Corbyn. The big difference is we actually have people admitting to it. These are, these are, you can see now on the screen, these are screenshots from Labour staffers upon learning that Labour won 40% of the vote, leading to a hung parliament. So yeah, this is, I think these are WhatsApp screenshots, I believe, but this is on the 8th of June. Julie Lawrence, we are stunned and reeling. Uh, Tracy Allen, they are cheering and we are silent and grey faced. Opposite to what I had been working towards for the last couple of years. So it's in black and white, they literally tried to throw the election. It's completely different to say that a national election had been rigged. Of course, this is Ian Austin. He hates the left. He's going to use anything he can. Sorry, Lord Austin. My apologies. So what is the fallout from all of this? Well, Trump has been removed from most social media platforms. Facebook and Twitter being the most significant. Um, I agree that Trump being banned from Twitter is the right thing to do. He used Twitter to spread disinformation, which led to riots, or led to the riots. However, I don't agree that he should have been automatically banned from all of social media. I think he should only be banned on instances where he incriminated himself on, you know, on the specific platform. The fact that tech companies can de-platform on a win is very dangerous. There is no proper legislation on how tech companies should operate. The left are always de-platformed, so I don't think we should change our tune based on our political opponents, even someone like Donald Trump. I know some may not agree with this, but tech companies have too much power, and I think there should be proper channels on, on how you deal with instances of censorship. Finally, Donald Trump has been impeached for the second time. This is the first time a president of the US has been impeached more than once. Ten Republicans voted in favour of the motion. They include Liz Cheney, Wyoming's at-large district, John Cato, Adam Kazinga, Fred Upton, Peter Major, Jamie Herrera Butler, I think I've probably butchered that name, Dan Newhouse, Anthony Gonzalez, Tom Rice, David Valado, Valado, uh, okay, probably butchered it. So there hasn't been a timetable for a vote on whether he could be criminally charged. Um, I think it's unlikely this would happen before the end of Trump's term. I will keep you guys updated on this. And I think we know this story is going to drag on for a long, long time. Thanks guys for watching. It's so good to be back. I'm really trying to make this a much more professional channel. After the lockdown, expect to see different types of content rather than just me and my political commentary. I hope you had a great Christmas and a new year. Please like this video, share it, and most importantly, subscribe to Turn Left for more independent media.